And the last factor that we'll mention here as a soil forming process is that of soil mixing. Soil mixing can be both physical and also can be due to the activity of biological organisms. In other words, soils are going to expand and contract as they freeze and thaw, and as, as part of the normal uh, physical weathering and development process, we're going to see some soil slippage, possibly some heaving of soils, heaving being where soils are actually, as they expand and contract, uh, they cause the uprooting of plants and, and soils being uh, moved around in the profile or portions of the soil profile. And Another process of soil mixing, of course, is any time we utilize that land for agricultural purposes and, and perform some type of tillage, we are mixing these soils. We are incorporating organic matter perhaps to greater depths than it would be otherwise. Uh, as, as soils are mixed, we aerate the soils, which accelerates the rate of organic matter decomposition and can also have an effect upon the uh, rate of mineral matter decomp decomposition and disintegration in the soil. With time, as we get a good soil, we get some structure development, we get some biological activity, then we see animal life, such as earthworms, even uh, in vertebrae types of animals, such as uh, gophers and moles and these types of things, living in the soil, insect life, arthropods, all of these are living in the soil, inhabiting the soil, and as they burrow through the soil, there are going to be some natural mixing occurs as a result of that activity as well. So if we start out with a soil that's very young, we expect to see very little profile development, low organic matter content, and our major type of minerals present will be the primary minerals. As that soil undergoes these weathering processes, we see some formation and development taking place. We will begin to see some horizon development in the profile. We will see some organic matter accumulation, and we will see an increase in the level of biological activity. That's both plant growth as well as animal life in the soil. Our soils that are in an intermediate to even somewhat advanced degree of weathering or development will typically have good profile development and a substantial amount of biological activity. If soils go beyond this state and become highly weathered, or what we call a soil in a very advanced degree of development, these soils will actually go the other way. We'll see a decreasing pH, which is less favorable to biological activity. We will see uh, primarily the basic soil cations, which are so important to plant growth, being replaced by acidic soil cations. We will see the pH going down. Uh, we may see even, we may see very distinct horizon development, but from both a chemical and a biological standpoint, these soils become less productive with time. Now this will typically occur in an area where we have an extreme climatic situation, very high rainfall, very high temperature. Uh, an example would be a subtropical or tropical type climate. Some of these soils have been weathered and developed to the standpoint to where they are very non-productive soils at this point in time. And if native vegetation is left in place, that typically is not a major problem. But if we go in, remove the native vegetation, and try to use that land for production of crops or agricultural purposes, these types of soils require a very high input cost in terms of uh, plant nutrients and fertilizers and maybe even the incorporation of organic material and trying to modify the pH with amendments such as lime in order to get these soils back into a productive range. So I think you can see from what we've talked about here today on soil formation and development is that we have a constant ongoing process. We have a process that is good in that soils that are very low from the standpoint of weathering and development have a tendency to be non-productive, but it can be bad from a standpoint if, if soils have become so highly developed to where most of the basic soil cations are gone, the pH is low, and the level of biological activity has gone down as well. Uh, the, these soils are also not productive. So ideally, from a productivity standpoint, and part of that, of course, is fertility, we would want to be looking at soils that are in intermediate degree of weathering or development. These have a tendency to have higher levels of biological activity. They have better structure formation in the soil profile. Uh, they have, based on better structure, better aeration, better water relations, and especially from a non-irrigated standpoint, we would expect these soils to be more productive uh, than one that had undergone a very low amount of weathering or one that had undergone a very high or extreme amount of weathering and development. 
this completes the uh, unit on, or the lecture part of the unit on soil formation and development. What I would like you to do at this time is to refer to your lab handout materials. You should find the lab entitled Soil Genesis and Profile Development. What you're going to be doing in this lab, as you work through it, there's a video that's associated with this as well, but as you work through this lab, you're going to be looking at some of the things that we've talked about in the lecture part of this unit. You're going to be looking at different soil monoliths which represent profiles from soils found in this Walla Walla County area. What you'll be looking at these profiles are, what you'll be looking at these profiles for will be to determine where horizons and or subhorizons begin and end as a result of these soil forming processes we've been talking about. And also you'll be looking at this from a standpoint of trying to identify structural units and the types of structural units that are located within these representative soil profiles. 